In this video, I'm going to share some more updates about the storm, uh, resources, different places for both victims of the storm and people if you're interested in donating and helping. I've done several of these, so I will put that uh, playlist in the description below. You don't really need to watch the videos. If you just went to those videos and looked in the description, I share all the information in the description. And I will do the same for this video. Any of the links and different things that I talk about, look in the description below and you can find them there. One of the first things I was going to share with you is my friend Don Casta. He has a great website where he's documenting uh, primarily the people of Swain County. Uh, thinking about historical, you know, before the park, people that once lived in the park in that area and other areas outside the park. Anyway, it's primarily that. But he's done a really interesting um, study and he hopes to expand it and do more on it. But comparing Helene, what's happened with the flood here in western North Carolina, with the flood of 1940, which was worse in Bryson City and Swain County there than maybe um, Buncombe County and Haywood County and all those, although they, they were definitely affected too. And anyway, it's really interesting. But he's added a little bit, and you have to kind of scroll down through some photos and read text. It's really interesting. But he's added some of the documentation from newspapers about the flood of 1916. Now, you may be like me. I'd never really heard about that flood unless I had maybe over my research, you know, thinking about just the whole of Appalachia. Maybe I had come across it once or twice, but it hadn't really stuck in my mind if I did until, of course, uh, we start hearing the, the just terrible damage of Helene. Then you start hearing people talk about the 1916 flood because it come, it was a hurricane. Also, it come in those same general areas in western North Carolina, and I'm sure East Tennessee. I don't know about that, but definitely western North Carolina. So if you scroll down through, I'm, I'll put the link in the description below to Don's website, and you read some of the newspaper articles, it's just eerily familiar. It's about the Swannanoa area being just decimated, and, and a lot of the other areas that are struggling right now were also struggling then. Kind of along that same theme, there's a video someone sent me. Uh, Carolina finds the great flood of Asheville at, again 1916 it's just a little short video that kind of details the history of that flood really interesting though to look back to it and then another one that someone sent me was um, I think James sent me both of those so thank you James uh, Edna Pryor it, it's an interview with Edna Pryor she could remember the 1916 flood of course this interview was done a long long time ago but this website or not website, this YouTube channel, and I should have wrote down the name of it, and I didn't, but if you go to this link that I put in the description, you can find it. It has several videos of interviews with people who remembered the 1916 flood. Again, if you listen to some of those interviews, it's just eerily familiar because it sounds like some of the stuff that we've heard from, from Helene. So I will put that in the description below, too. The next two things I was going to share is kind of examples of what's happening uh, some of the things that are happening right now. So one of them, uh, someone again sent me this. I have a dear friend who is really working uh, her own community and was affected by the flood. So she's got lots of stuff to do there, but she's also really worked to ag kind of aggregate all the information and then send it out to people who can hopefully get the word out. So she sent me so much information. I really, really appreciate her. So this is how I found this is, I'd never heard of her before, Courtney Daly. She's an author, and she's in East Tennessee. So I'll just link to her Facebook page, and you can go there and hear her updates about what they're doing, uh, what she's seeing, what she's hearing, and the wonderful work that they're doing. Just kind of a snapshot into seeing what's going on. This next one was uh, sent by my friend, too. It's just something posted in the Burnsville uh, Facebook group, and it was by Brunson Gunner. Like a blessing box, this was what he's going to do, like a blessing box except bigger and not just for food or toiletries. I'm going to build some 6x6 six six freestanding sheds that I can place around the mountains. I will stock them with seasoned firewood, gasoline, propane, and hay or anything else that people need. I think it would be very helpful to have some communities to have those for some communities to have the many aid stations within walking or ATV distance that they can grab what they need. We will keep them stocked as long as needed. Once they are no longer needed, anyone in the community that could use the little structure, you know, could have it. 
I'll put the link for that in the description below. And then if you want to reach out to him and see if you could help with that project, that might be, be really great. The next one is uh, My Home Hub is Restoration Church's Disaster Relief Hub in Swannanoa, Swannanoa, North Carolina. And we are always in need of volunteers. Our website is Restoration Church, North Carolina, restorationchurchnc.org slash disaster dash relief. I'll put that link in the description below. The volunteer form is near the bottom as well as our Amazon donation list and financial donation area. So if you couldn't sign up to go volunteer, maybe you could get on their Amazon list and send them something they need or financially assist them. Our lead coordinator is Steve Lambert. His number is 1-919-810-0867. If you want to volunteer your time for sorting, supply donations, and distribution with our chainsaw crews, you of course would need you know, prior experience, with heavy machinery if you have it, or tradesmanship, please fill out the form and come on by. And that's at 90 Buckeye Access Road, Swannanoa, North Carolina. This is also where you can drop off or ship donations. Our current needs are generators, heaters, cots, coffee pots, mini fridges, and dehumidifiers. How we are helping, what our organization is doing. They're rebuilding roads, bridges, and restoring homes to safe living conditions, drywall, etc., not just a shell. Welfare checks, they're doing them. Uh, tree limb removal, essential supplies for families, other hubs, local fire departments, etc. Fuel resupply, generator installation, maintenance, insulin runs, hot showers, laundry, hot meals, and truly anything else that is brought to their attention within their capacity to handle. We're a family and we've made this community our family too. So that's really wonderful work there going on. General Helene donation tips. Please keep in mind, although the balance of supplies donations coming in versus being sorted going out, I know can be frustrating, especially for our wonderful neighbors that have driven far out of their way to help, but they're going to give you these tips about it. A, the most valuable thing you can donate is time. Please don't take me saying this as meaning we don't appreciate every single monetary and material contribution that's been made. It will all go to use this winter. But we need people to help support, distribute it to the community. We're past the initial volunteer push, voluntary push, volunteer push, I think they meant. And as we head into winter, less people will want to be out doing volunteer work. So please, if dropping off a donation, consider staying for even an hour or two so we can get these life-sustaining supplies out faster. B, this donation rush will end, and these people will depend on us for at least six months. Power companies are saying that the minimum time frame for restoring power is the six months, so people will need assistance for at least that long. The we can't take XYZ will wear off in just a month or two, and all of our organizations are going to be desperate for your donations. So please keep this longevity in mind as you organize donation drives from home. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. C. If you're donating clothes, please sort by size, style, etc. Vacuum sealing will get you five extra brownie points. Same goes for blankets, only wool, as the hot, uh, cotton takes heat. I don't really understand what that means. I guess cotton, wool is the warmest is what they're trying to say. Uh, no sheets unless flannel winter and they need to be new. They need to be new or so like new you can't really tell. This is about giving with dignity. Same with food. Please check expiration dates. Same with toiletries. No opened or already used bathroom supplies. Confirm with your donation drop spot whether or not they are taking clothes. Many of them do not want clothes. They're not taking clothes. When donating heaters, please also grab some CO2 and smoke detectors, extra batteries, and a dry fire extinguisher. E. When donating sleeping bags, they must be 30 degree bags or lower. Anything warmer than that isn't going to help prevent hypothermia in these mountains. Please donate sleeping pads as well. Bags are no good if they have no insulation from the ground. Absolutely, this is F. Absolutely, every grassroots organization will tell you they need heavy machinery. 
If you have access to literally any heavy machinery, donating any amount of time with it is such a blessing, I can't even describe it. We truly appreciate you all so much, and thank you for being patient with us while we smooth this process out. I assure you there are many wonderful people trying to streamline this process as best as we possibly can. Western North Carolina volunteers need it immediately, and this was updated on the 28th of October, so a few days ago. All these locations can use volunteers. Most are open 9 to 5 or 9 to 6. Please read info included, contact location for more information. And I would say that's a must. You contact them and make sure of what they need before you go. And I'll put these in the description below so you can see the contact uh, information. But Bald Creek Elementary School, that one, and that's in Burnsville, North Carolina. It doesn't really have any contact information, but I'll put the address. Maynard Electric, and that's in Morganton, North Carolina. Creston Fire Department, and that's in Creston, North Carolina. Yancey County Rescue Squad in Burnsville. Silver, Silverados, 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 why can't I say that? Doesn't sound right, Silverados. Need help sorting supplies, that's in Black Mountain. Pleasant Gap Church, that's in Green Mountain, North Carolina. Appalachia Disaster Coalition, ask for Tracy at 704-297-5381. Western North Carolina Livestock Center, that's in Canton, North Carolina. Banner Elk Resource Center, of course, is in Banner Elk. Black Mountain Machine and Tool in Black Mountain. Spokes of Hope, and that's in uh, Lake Lure. So I will put that in there. I think they're located somewhere else, but they're in Lake Lure at this time. And then they've got the information of where, where to sign up if they need help with muck outs, cutouts, carpentry, and chainsaw teams. Camp Miller is in Pensacola, North Carolina. Yancey County Helene Relief Center is 828-682-1883. That's, they could tell you different opportunities. Burnsville, this is Josh Warren, 828-284-9223. Again, I'm sure they could tell you more information. Marion, Jim Artman, 828-447-3929. Spruce Pine, Jamie Miller, 843-566-5550. I'll put all that information again in the description. There are literally dozens of dozens of places needing help. Please, if you can come, volunteer. We will feed you best we can and be oh so grateful. Added a, they've added a little piece about lodging. You can either camp out or some are able to find hotels about an hour away now. Depends on where you are volunteering. Bring your own food, but some restaurants are starting to open. And then Tracy says, if you have, this is posted by Tracy Adams, if you have a place needing volunteers please let her know you can text her at 704-297-5381 and then there's the donation hub volunteer assistance list i'll put that list down there it goes with that in the description and then i'll put the source also where all that come from so this update is for mitchell county mitchell county and they've got a little link there. I'll put it in the description. It says, use this link to sign up for weekly updates posted on Wednesday. So if you needed more information about Mitchell County, that would be a great thing to sign up for. And then you could, you could see their updates each week. It's hard to believe it's been almost a month since Helene impacted our community. As we continue to recover, our needs are evolving. Right now, we urgently need gravel and volunteers to help repair driveways and bridges. Another significant need is for home and business cleanup. If you, your organization, or your church group can lend a hand, please reach out to the Volunteer Reception Center at the number 828-660-0818. Our community thanks you and welcomes you. And I'll put that information in the, the source there. And then uh, this is something they've started that's new. Now you can listen to their updates if you want to. Instead of like filling out the little form, you can now subscribe to We Are Mitchell, our podcast for Mitchell County. You can also copy our feed link on this page and put it in your favorite podcast player. We will show up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other popular podcast platforms in the coming weeks. 
and I will leave that uh, source, but then it's also, you can just go to wearemitchell.podbean.com, podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N.com, and I will put that source. Also, Mitchell County is asking that it's critical that we hear from you about privately maintained roadways, bridges, culverts, and tiles impacted by recent events. If you haven't already, please take a moment to fill out the form linked below by November 8th. Your input helps us assess damages and utilize this information to receive help from the state and federal level. Roadways, bridges, culverts, and tile form, and I'll put that in the description below and then the source. This next one is the Tiny Home Relief Project. Tiny, Tiny Home Relief Project. Uh, so many people have lost their homes and it takes a long time to replace them. If you think about building a whole house like here I'm sitting at at my house, that would take a long time to do that. But tiny homes might give people an option that's much better than a tent, but it could be done quickly and, you know, more quickly than this. And then they could figure out what to do as far as building back their original home. So Tiny Home Relief Project uh, Facebook account is active. Please like and follow. There are a tremendous amount of gears turning at the moment. We are answering everybody's questions and accepting donations along with navigating new relationships with new businesses and organizations and new people at the same time. It's most definitely crunch time. It's getting colder every day in North Carolina and Tennessee and we have American families without homes and displaced from Hurricane Helene. It's all about getting these homes south at the moment. The nonprofit is organized and active. This is 100% volunteer, 100% nonprofit, and 100% disaster relief. Please help us navigate this new sense of hope that we can share with communities in need. Uh, they have a PayPal that's active. If you want to donate and help them do that, I will put that information in the link. I mean, in the description below, I'll put that link. You can also send gift cards to us here. Thank you for your support. You can send the gift cards, or I'm sure monetary too, Tiny Home Relief Project, 13180 Garrett Highway, STE 68, Oakland, Maryland, 21550. And then I'll put that source, and then I wanted to read you just what they were saying here. They say, we want to be as transparent as we can with everyone involved and all affected from Hurricane Helene. Our first homes are going to be to families in Yancey County, North Carolina. We're working with local officials to place the homes where they're needed. We're going to construct tiny homes for relief until we cannot build them anymore. This is 100% nonprofit, so please work with us as we navigate several obstacles. We have had an overwhelming amount of volunteers step forward, which we are planning to bring on in the very new f near future. We've almost completed the first tiny home. It has been a slow process while we take notes of what we're doing so the rest of them can be assembled more quickly and efficiently. We're building these in Western Maryland and transporting them. We have several contractors from Garrett County, Maryland working on this project to assure that these tiny homes are built efficient and swift. If you are a family that needs our assistance, please reach out through local officials in your area. Our contact at the time is via email, donate at tinyhomereliefproject.org. Thank you for all your time and thank you for your heartwarming me messages. This next one is from the Cajun Navy. I never knew about the Cajun Navy until this happened and what wonderful work they do. So they say, we need veterans and first responders that lost their homes. We have a bunch of trailers that we need to get set up for them. And you can send your, if, you're, if you fall in that uh, demographic, you can send your information to info at CajunNavy2016.org. And then they've got their address. I'll put all that in the description below. And then they've got a, a link, too. I'll put that. And they've got a phone number. It's 833-225-8616. This one is one that someone sent me, Spokes of Hope, another organization I never heard about. I will just link to their, it's a Facebook page. I'll put that in the description below and you can see the stuff that they're doing. I think that was one of the places we mentioned that needed the volunteers. 
so you can go to their Facebook page and learn more. This next one I've mentioned in several of my videos, Deep River Farm. It's a group of churches, several different denominations that have come together that are trying to help in various different ways, from Christmas to sponsoring families to actually taking supplies. So I'll put the link to his uh, channel in the description below. And this last one is a Amazon list for Bald Creek Relief Amazon page. That's where it come from, Bald Creek Relief. And it's at Burnsville, North Carolina. So it's where another one of the Amazon pages they've set up where you can just send information. They've got it all listed out what they need. And then it just goes directly to them. So you don't have to worry about mailing it or anything like that. I will encourage you if you have any other information to share, uh, whether it's about volunteering, if it's about donations or anything like that, just put it in the comments, please. And then people can read through the comments and see if there's additional information. As I sit here doing this video, you may be able to hear it's raining. It's raining at my house today. Um, and, and we need the rain, so that's good in one way, but it's not in the other way that I figure if it's raining here, it's likely raining in two in East Tennessee and Western North Carolina, the areas that were affected. My area was not affected whatsoever by the storm. And I know that that's gonna hinder the work that they're doing. And please just continue to hold them up in prayer. Prayer is the best thing you can do. We can we can volunteer and we can send donations and we can help get information out like I'm doing. but prayer uh, we serve a mighty God and he can help on whether it's a financial need a shelter need thinking about the rain and, and the cold weather thinking about all those things the guidance with what they're going to do with their life I can't imagine the heartache of people that have lost their homes and in many situations their vehicles and their livelihood wherever they worked you know they may have may all be gone uh, may all be gone at once I just can't imagine but please continue to pray for them and also pray for all the people who are helping. A lot of this work is dangerous work. Uh, when you think about using that heavy equipment and the linemen and all those kind of folks, but even delivering the stuff back and forth, you know, pray for safety on the highways for people. Just continue to hold all these people up in prayer. I appreciate you listening to this update. I hope you'll share it with anyone you may know who needs it whether it's uh, someone that's suffering from the storm damage or just someone that wants more information about how to help.